Heroes. There are some 500 Scottish soldiers currently serving in Afghanistan. For many of them, it's their first operational tour. But engaging with the enemy is not the only aspect of an overseas posting. There's a real emphasis on diffusing situations before they arise and helping communities in which they're deployed. After centuries of being posted overseas, no one knows the importance of this more than the Scottish regiments. On the ground out here in Afghanistan, knowledge is key. I'm here with Lieutenant Andy Wallace to find out why local intelligence is so important to success. Andy, tell us a bit about your role as the I.O. Uh, my role as I.O. is about getting all the necessary information uh, with regards to uh, enemy, um, local national people, Afghan security forces and putting that all together in order that my company commander's got the information he needs and the platoon commanders under him have got the information that they need uh, on the ground and they know exactly what they're going into when they go into the area. So what sort of intelligence are you looking for specifically? Gathering sort of lower level information that has a sort of a tactical impact on the ground, finding out the who of the enemy, the where uh, and where the threat is and you can gain a lot from local people if they're willing to talk to you. So part of this intelligence gathering on the job will presumably get better relations with the local population? Uh, well, absolutely. Um, on many of the ops, it's always a goal to have the, the Afghan face, and, and they interact very well with uh, local nationals. Uh, and the relations that you build through that pay off in the long term. What does winning the population's hearts and minds really mean? We built up a trust and a rapport with the local people, um, and that, in the long term, is, is where we're effectively going to win the conflict. The importance of local intelligence and also respecting local culture that soldiers serving in Afghanistan are very aware of today has been learnt the hard way in conflicts around the globe. One of the most shocking examples of British forces failing to recognise the importance of having local people on their side was in India during the heyday of the empire. The army totally underestimated the extent of simmering bitterness amongst the Indian sepoy soldiers, who felt that their way of life was not being respected. Resentment against British rule had been building for some time, and it finally exploded with devastating consequences in 1857, with the outbreak of the famously bloody Indian Mutiny. The Indian soldiers attacked both British soldiers and civilians, with a large number of women and children being brutally slaughtered. It was one of the most violent episodes ever in the history of the Empire. Spies reported that Major Smith's head was cut off, with his helmet, plume and uniform paraded through the streets of Lucknow as the Commander-in-Chief. But the triumph of the enemy was short. To find out what part the Scottish regiments played in putting down the revolt and returning India to British rule, I'm at Stirling Castle to meet military historian Trevor Royal. The Scottish regiments really came to the fore during the siege of Lucknow. Um, there, the local population, women and children mainly, were able to make their way into the residency, which quickly became an armed camp. And this was a fortified building. It had a lot of out areas with um, strong points, which were quite easily defended. And three Highland regiments were involved in the retaking of um, Lucknow. And it gave rise to one of the great iconic poems of uh, the Victorian period, the Pipes of Lucknow. Dinna you hear it, dinna you hear it, the Pipes of Lucknow sound. The people inside the residency, the first thing that they heard, the first time they knew that help was at hand, was when they had heard the pipes and drums of the 42nd Highlanders, the 78th Highlanders and the 93rd Highlanders. About two o'clock, the order was given for the advance of the 42nd to lead and the 93rd to support but we'd no sooner emerged from the shelter of the palace from the garden wall than the orderly advance became a rushing torrent, both regiments dashing down the slope abreast. And earthworks, trenches, rifle pits in front of the Martini air were cleared, the enemy flying before us as fast as their legs could carry them. The successful relief of Lucknow became a legendary chapter in the history of the Indian mutiny and the bravery of the soldiers who saved the British civilians from a horrible fate at the hands of the rebels was greatly celebrated. 
All told, the Scottish regiments managed to harvest in 34 Victoria Crosses, which sounds a lot to modern ears, but we have to remember that it was a recently introduced uh, award for valour. And a famous recipient of, of that medal was uh, McBean. The later General McBean, one of Scotland's great soldiers, he won his Victoria Cross at Lucknow, killed 11 mutineers with his bare hands and a rusty old knife. Only the last mutineer was killed at Sword Point. And when McBean was given his uh, award, he was congratulated for a good day's work. And he says, tuts, it only took me 20 minutes. William McBean's greatest military achievement took place a long way from his hometown of Inverness. And today's young soldiers also find themselves fighting halfway across the world in a very different environment. I'm meeting some of the members of the Royal Regiment of Scotland to find out what it's like to be posted overseas. Alex, have you found this exciting, this experience? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I've done two operational tours before. I've been to Bosnia in 2003, then I was in Iraq in uh, 2005, 2006. I was originally in the Highlanders. And obviously one of the good things about it being uh, a raw regiment now is you can uh, swap them between regiments. But Darren, what's it been like for you leaving home on this operational tour for the first time? Well, it's been pretty hard, but like once you get into the rhythm of things like writing home, receiving letters, getting your half an hour every week, phoning home, it feels good always keeping in touch with the family. It's not like I I'm not talking to them, I'm still keeping in touch with them, which is always good. Oh. Their girlfriends are the same, they start off with, they, they miss you so much the first couple of weeks and then they get themselves into their routine and they don't really miss you as much and then towards your time coming home they start missing you again. Well, how do they feel? Is it pride? Is it fear? Is it...? I, th I think it's a bit of both. They, they are proud of the job that we do, but at the same time uh, when it comes on the news that another British soldier has uh, sadly been killed and obviously they've, we can't phone home say so we're okay until the details of the the dead soldier's been sent home, so I suppose they would worry in that way. They've just got to wait by the phones, basically. Camp Roberts is home to these soldiers for the duration of their operational tour in Afghanistan. And despite the 50-degree heat and unfamiliar surroundings, there are reminders of Scotland here. In the 19th century, the soldiers were given India Pale Ale as a comforting reminder of home. Here in Afghanistan, they get pie and chips as an occasional treat. Modern troops may have more home comforts at hand, but they are still a long way from home. The last time these soldiers saw Scotland was when they left Fort George near Inverness some seven months ago. And it's here that I've come to meet military writer Stuart Reid to find out about the importance of the role played by the Scots in the British Empire. What was the level and the impact of Scottish regiments on the build-up of the Empire? Enormous, is the short answer. The Scots were involved in the Empire from the very beginning. This curious notion gets peddled from time to time that Highlanders were exploited in building the Empire, but it was the Scots themselves who, more than anyone else, built the Empire. The Crimea was that classic image of the thin red line, which, more than anything else, sort of cemented the visual image of the Highland soldier. and. The reputation was made. Everyone expected Highlanders to do well, and they lived up to that reputation, often at terrible cost. The incredible scope of service Scottish soldiers could expect to see within this period is remarkable, and possibly best exemplified by the career of one of the country's greatest fighting heroes. Colin Campbell was born in 1792, the son of a carpenter, educated at the high school in Glasgow, and then at the age of 15, joined the army and left to fight. Campbell fought in the Peninsula Wars, the War of 1812, the First Opium War, the Second Anglo-Sikh War, the Crimean War, and finally in the Indian Mutiny. For his services to the Empire, in particular crushing the mutiny, he was created First Baron Clyde in 1858. Zero to hero, a true fighting Scot. Coming up next, our boys in Afghanistan are given their orders to prepare for an operation. And we hear how Scottish soldiers stoically marched across this very soil some 130 years ago. 